get to see who is going to be dropping out at fourth as, hey, nine, here's the Zane Sheik. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, that, that is the over nine, huh? So, he got in that arena quickly. Jeez. He, it, it seemed like he just won that set two minutes ago. And all of a sudden, he's here with a stage pick, with a character pick. And and now Dark Falcon has to deal with a with a Zane Sheik in his face. And they got the hot hand, and Zane is hungry for that rematch. Uh, all the way in Grand Finals, Jonathan is awaiting for the potential return of Zane if he can go through not only Dark Falcon but also Jagrun. And with how good they've been playing at the start of this, and it, what seems like they're rocking with a hot hand. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Jay Grunt and Dark Falcon have a big mountain to climb with hey, with Loser's Bracket Zane. But, I mean, you see that Revenant tag in front of Dark Falcon. You see, we, what do you got for me, Mr. Revenant and Lair? How do, you, how do you feel about this guy? I like him. Uh, he's, a, he's a very good Belmont player. Probably on his way to being the best in Tri-State. Um, no team bias, of course. Um, but you know, I, I've played him in bracket before. Uh, he's really, he's really good at, at keeping his distance, and he is really good at recognizing when his boomerang or the uh, holy cross is returning, and is able to get some really nutty conversions off of that. Um, he's really good at spacing out, playing neutral. Uh, but you know, what Belmont isn't. Honestly, this guy's overall incredibly solid. But the problem is, he's playing against one of the best rushdown characters in the game, uh, and someone with a quite a good offstage presence and a lot of experience to boot in Zane, and it's gonna be difficult no matter how good you are in this game you never want to have to deal with a guy with the caliber of Zane. and Zane, i mean they got it feels like they have they have the low percent strings and combos on lock for sheik but uh, crawling to high percent is always going to be that uh, that struggle. And, I mean, Zane, no exception on that front. But with Dark Falcon only at 38 now, it kind of feels like he's at more prone of death now than he was at 112 prior. So, yeah. I mean, okay. the, the weakness of Sheik as that forward throw ends up uh, taking the stock. Sheik also, also rather light. Wow, that was 41. Holy moly. <laughs> yeah, he is a glass cannon. Uh, honestly, you know, something I've been thinking about, she kind of is still stuck in, in Smash 4 in, in terms of how much damage she does. Like, pretty much every character across the board got a little bit of a damage buff, except Sheik. And I know Sheik was the crazy good top tier in that game, but still, I mean, come on, you know, give her a little bit of a buff. Jeez, Sakurai. I mean, they did. Twice. There's a reason that Sheik is still a high tier, even though that uh, some of her individual hits could leave a little bit to, a yeah. little bit to be desired as calling out the roll in. Yeah. Uh, she's really strong because when she get uh, pretty much every one hit they get is uh, two or three more. Right. Fortunately, Dark Falcon has been uh, minimizing the, the amount of hits in the latter half of this game to uh, oh. very, very <laughs> few. That was almost incredibly terrifying, uh, but, you know, a good roll out from Zane to avoid the uh, holy holy water um, and the cross uh, in one fell swoop. Uh, the bouncing fish not going to connect under the ledge, and accidental B-reverse under that. I think uh, he meant to go the other, day, other way with that, but uh, the buffer in this game is kind of hard to deal with sometimes, especially when you're inputting so many inputs real quick. Dark Falcon uh, back off stage again. Tossing out the holy water, not gonna connect. Zane is slowly but surely trying to creep their way back into advantage state. Um, you know, Dark Falcon just taking their time at the ledge, getting the forward air off of the cross. Patience. But it's the patience on ledge from Dark Falcon to wait for his cross to come back to make to make sure that he could get off ledge for free. Right, this is this is the patience of a Belmont player, and the the F totes are starting to really come into full force. One of Belmont's uh, better tools, especially since uh, even though their dash is a little bit mediocre, that move is rather quick. Is okay. Zane still makes it back. Confirms the edge guard. Uh, and again, uh, <laughs> the fair trains are real. Dark Falcon cannot uh -oh. cannot sleep on Zane's uh, Zane's combo game. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah, down tilt one. That is a trick I've seen uh, Dark Falcon employ. Uh, actually, against me personally, a couple times, and um, oh yeah, also yeah, angle down back here. That move is pretty good. Cracked. 
Yeah, it's a, the benefit, of course, it's only active for one frame, but True. it's super quick, it's super long, and it's got that nice sweet spot. So even with Zane uh, starting to put on a little bit of show, starting to mix, overcommitted to the platform, and even as slow, someone as slow as Belmont can, can just get back to center and punish this aggressive up area. Yeah. Called out the drift wrong, and that's going to be the stock. Uh, really solid play from a Dark Falcon after a very scary start and yeah. a successful edge guard. Uh, As you can see right here. Yep, jump forward yep. air. Gone. Doesn't um, do a lot of damage, but when you're off stage, it does do a little bit of knockback when you're at 120%. Um, you don't need much to make a Belmont uh, wish they wish they hadn't been off stage to begin with. But the stick in the Sheik, stick yeah. in the Sheik is Zane, and they're not not going to any of their other plethora of uh, pockets and i can understand why you wouldn't want to play a uh, duck hunt yeah as... that matchup sounds kind of hard it just sounds like it's it, duck hunt is a beat behind the projectile usage of Dar of uh, belmont in a lot of ways so belmont their stuff is kind of sluggish but it comes out quickly meanwhile a lot of duck hunts big threats take a little bit to set up absolutely yeah, but I mean that's why we're going. That's why they are they're going the sheik, and can't confirm that edge guard either. But as long as you keep Dark Falcon only just trying to retreat and throw cross, you don't have to worry about some of the more dangerous stuff that any Belmont player uh, is practiced and looks forward to when they properly conditioned. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh, I, I want to talk about the stage pick just a little bit. Uh, this is a very small right. stage. Um, as you can see, um, so it's really good for rushdowns against zoners. Here's the thing, though. Um, when my friend Dark Falcon throws out a projectile or his whip, that's a lot less space you have to move around it a little bit. So uh, it, this this stage really benefits the character who's in advantage at the time. Um, and uh, you know that ledge is a little bit weird too. Almost getting the the fancy combo. Um, that ledge is a little weird too because I think Holy Water has a hitbox kind of in the ground and since the stage is so thin you can kind of hit people who are hanging on at the ledge um, really easily on this stage. Also down smash so this is a pretty difficult stage um, you know in, in terms of playing against the Belmonts but I think rushdowns also do benefit here quite a little bit. It's the it's a double-edged sword of a small stage, and particularly with the design philosophy of Ultimate. Like a lot of things are just natively really good. That includes a lot of projectile tosses. I mean, we've seen how many holy waters have just come at the perfect spacing of this ledge, and a Dark Falcon doesn't need to retreat too far to get right back to center. It's the cross into the axe. I mean, that's why we. That's why you throw out the cross at its tilt input, sends at a slightly different angle, and it's even better for clips such as that. Every yeah, option was covered there. You know what you gotta do, bad boy, bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is three stocks to to one right now. Um, yeah. You know it's gonna take like one decent hit uh, onto Dark Falcon in order to take that stock. But here's the thing, Sheik doesn't have a lot of those, and Belmonts are a big boy, or they are big boys. So. I mean, yeah, the raw, the raw damage from Sheik is uh, it leaves a lot to be desired. As wow, wait, that backer hit. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, man, they uh, didn't want, they didn't want to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. A three stock coming out in game two, and Dark Falcon, barring a character swap from Z from Zane, uh, seems like they are poised to take this 3-0. Um, but I do think you know we were talking about it before, three characters. Or excuse me, nine characters we've seen from Zane, and I'm, I guarantee you he has another one in his pocket that he likes in this matchup. I mean, more than likely, it, it'd be it'd be something to see him stay uh, to see them stay. Oh, they left. Uh, okay. Hey y'all. Hi, Helper. Hi. Helper here. I have a bracket update. I have uh, a bracket update. Zane is dequeuing for I quote a scroll girls bracket. Okay. God yeah. bless you. I, I seen them playing uh them playing Skullgirls a lot recently, which is why they were gonna stick to uh, different characters, which is a uh, you know character number ten here. Uh, they had been practicing Joker a lot recently, but I guess 
going with the Sheik here and saying, you know what? I'm gonna go play Skullgirls, which, hey, respectable. Skullgirls are sick. I'll blame you. <laughs> Thank you, Helper. 